we've done it before. We've done it before. We've done it at, at Twickenham. We've done it at the Principality Stadium. We can do it again on Saturday. We can do it again on Saturday, but we have to be at our best. And if we do that, then we can beat them. But it all comes down to having those key components, which are the basics. Because when you talk about basics, you talk about a good scrum, good lineup, good contact area. Do that, you can win the game. Anything off 100%, then we could be struggling. Okay, lads, time to deliver. Amazon delivers you the rugby, the Autumn Nations Cup, live on Prime Video. I can't allow that. Mate, I tell you what, we're recording now. Interestingly, last night, so I was on the sofa, so we're doing a couple of things around the, the Lions tour. So I started putting in speeches in YouTube and stuff. And the one that always gets me, it's not Telfer, it's not McGeekin, it's your School of Hard Knocks one where, have you seen the dragon? The dragon. Oh, the dragon. Favourite one, mate. <laughs> Favourite There's a one. couple of dragons. Was it, uh, was it in, in Wales? The one in Wales? The one in Wales, yeah, yeah. So, Have you uh, seen the fucking dragon? I love it. Uh, mate, well, just, just on that, and we're talking about the, the Welsh dragon and the fire of the dragon, I don't want to speak out of turn, but where's the dragon in Wales at the minute? They've just lost all kind of... It's, it's easy to sit here and judge, and the only reason I'm saying that they've lost all the identity is because semi-finalists, unbelievable for years, and arguably you could say overachieving. I mean, and that's Gatlin saying that as opposed to me. So when you're watching it as a proud Welshman, how are you evaluating what you're seeing at the minute? Um, do you know what? It's funny because everybody, Warren Gatlin's gone, you know, uh, Sean Edwards has gone, Rob Howley, Rob McBride, you know, they, 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 they've all they, they've all gone to, on the passages now. Uh, Jinx is still there, uh, you know, and, uh, and Bobby's still there, a fitness coach. And, uh, of course, Wayne Pivac's in now, Stephen Jones, who had the World Cup, uh, has, has come in, uh, Hams has come in as well. And, you know, it, it, it's funny because um, when you look back, everybody thinks, and everybody remembers over 12 years, they remember the Grand Slams. And they remember the Grand Slams is absolutely incredible. You know, in, uh, when Gats came in 2008, they won the Grand Slam because they won one just before him with Mike Rudder, uh 2005. And, you know, uh, the, the performances in 13. And, of course, the last one, uh, was was incredible, you know, 2019 to, to, to win uh, to win to win that one, and then uh, you know, but people kind of forget that 2008, uh, sorry, 2012 during that period, you know, we lost eight in a row, uh, under Warren and under Rob. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel too hard because we are a side that 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 peaks, that troughs, that that that, that comes back, uh, uh, and you know, way people like I said that. 2023 is his, that, that, that's his goal. He, he's building the 2023. He wants to change the side. He wants to, uh, to change the way that uh, uh, they play slightly. Uh, so in doing that, it's going to take time. And, uh, you know, I'm not one of these guys that, you know, gets a coach in and uh, wants to get rid of them as, as soon as there's a couple, of, uh, a couple of defeats. You know, I mean, I played in Wales when it was a Millennium Stadium. I played there as a young lad against Ponty, Ponty Prid and Ponty Paul and these teams yeah. when, when I was at my local club. And one of the things that always sticks with me, one is how engaged people are with rugby in Wales. But when you speak to a lot of people, they'll say that when the Millennium, the Principality Stadium in Cardiff is full, there's no better place to play. And almost before you stepped out there, as much as you wanted to win, you could just feel that it was, you know, near or impossible, especially in the Scotland jersey back in the day. How much, and again, this yeah. is going back to your analogy with the dragon and the emotion and when you hear you speak and the way that you spoke as a player and the way that you played the game, how much is this Welsh team reliant on the, on, on the fans, on the crowd and that emotional aspect that binds the jersey to the players and the fans? Yeah, you're exactly right. I think, I think, I think Scotland is very similar. When you hear Florida, Scotland, you hear those pipes on the top of uh, Bicky Murray Field, and uh, when, when, when you hear that, you know, you, you get a bit bigger, you get a bit stronger, you know, your identity is suddenly is suddenly there. But those nerves sort of dissipate in, in those environments. It's exactly the same for us. And it's, it's not necessarily the anthem, it's not necessarily the 75,000 people uh, that are in the stadium, in the, in the Principality Stadium. It, it's almost the drive in, you know, the drive from the Vale. 
uh, match day when, when when you get to, when you get into Cardiff and you see the castle and then you turn right to the castle and you go you go down the road and then you turn right to go into the Prince Park Stadium and the fans the tens of thousands of fans that are standing there all with that there was all with their leaks all with a pint in their hand all went in to, to see the team when you drive into our stadium you know then as a player that those people are with you. You know, you, you're there. So it, it's, it's like I say many, many times. It, it's not 15 people. It's not 23 people. It's not a squad of 36. It, it's a squad of 3 million. That's what Wales is. It's a squad of 3 million. And if you have those back in the 3 million, and when you see that, and when you get into the bus and you see the pride, the passion, what people write about you, what people tweet. And, you know, when I first got when I had my first cap, I had a telegram. You, you, big man, are too, uh, too young to remember what a telegram is, right? right? I had a telegram in there, and you can imagine the pressure that they're under now. But when you get onto that field, when you walk down that tunnel, and the flames go in the air, and you turn, you, you, you sing the national anthem, you look up to your family, you, you blow them a kiss, then you go to work. That's the easy bit, you know? That's the easy bit. It, it, it's, it's controlling those emotions to be able to go to work is, is the hardest part. And then, do you think, in, in, you know, going back to the question, do you think this has affected the Welsh players? I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, was, I was chatting to John Cooney, who's the Ulster scrum half and was in the Ireland squad and has spoken vocally about playing for the Lions. And his form, he, he said it himself, has dipped over the lockdown period, dealing with that, but then also coming back into stadium with no fans. Like, how do you think yeah. this is part of the Welsh team not performing where they were. I know you mentioned they're in transition, but because there is a large element there, they're not even playing in the Cardiff Stadium. They're playing in Tlethley. So how much of that yeah. is affecting this team and how much do you feel for Pivak and that not being able to draw on that history? And you're quite right. You know, they're playing in Parker Scarlet. And uh, Parker Scarlet, it, it doesn't matter. It did make me laugh uh, on the weekend right, when Eddie Jones said, we're not playing in the stadium. What did he say? We're playing in the ground. We're, we're, we're playing. In... No, you know, we, we had as many fans in Parker Scarlet on Saturday as you had in Twickenham Pub. That, we, we had exactly the same amount of fans. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter where you're playing. You're playing on a cabbage patch, which is what they do at Twickenham. You know, you, you play uh, on, on a cabbage patch. And it, it, it's one of those. It's difficult because you've got to generate that, that feeling for yourself. I was there with Prime Video, uh, you know, and, and, and Stephen standing on the side, it felt different. You know, you could hear the national anthems. I could hear myself sing the national anthem, and I can't sing very well, you know, kind of put me off. And it, it's, one of those, it's one of those situations where it's the same for everybody. I know it's, I know it's difficult. I know you've got to draw that inspiration. And, and the 16th man, the, the, the crowd, the, the, they, they are definitely there for you. But when you're playing for your country, you've just got to go to that place where, you know, when you cross that white line, you've just got to become the, the person that you were meant to be. Absolutely. And, you know, off the back of Eddie Jones's comments and you look at this England team and the match Wales versus England, I mean, how do Wales approach this? I, I suppose that the first question that I want to ask as a Welshman, and I say this as an English Scotsman, knowing when we played against England, it was always the biggest game, always the biggest game because of the history that had gone by. Is it the same? I get the same gauge that the same for, for the Welsh lads, same for you guys, that when you play England, it is the biggest game. Is there any reason behind that? Is it to the success? Is it history? Has it just always been a thing? Uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's funny because it's just, it, it, why is it the biggest? It's just because. And I think it's the same for Scotland. You know what I mean? Why is it the big, biggest game? Because exactly. if we beat you, we can take the piss out of 60 million people. You know what I mean? If you beat us, you take the piss out of 3 million people. So, you know, it's kind of big brother, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. And then you look at the game and do you see any chinks in this England team? They're pretty formidable, aren't they? Fans, no fans, whatever team they, they, they put out there. But... I mean, Wales are a team that always run them close and, you know, the, the physical attributes that Wales can bring regardless of, of the performances. Do you see any chinks in this armour of this England team? They're very strong. You, you know, you, you have a look at it. You have a look at that performance on the weekend. Is it 230, 235 tackles? Something ridiculous. That's, all, like that's, that. all, that's almost 
well, that's almost as many as you make in the Six Nations, really. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it's just just incredible. They, they, they beat the uh, uh, they beat Ireland. They beat them convincingly, and, and they beat them at the contact area. They beat them physically. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they they stood over the top of them and and, and ground them down. You know, Johnny May uh, scored two tries, a second try. You know, play it. It's, it's very un English, like really play it from inside your twenty-two. You know what I mean? But when you got a guy guy like that with a pace like that, you know what I mean? You're, uh, you're gonna have a go, um, but physically they were just just, just incredibly uh, superior. So what do you think if you if you put in I suppose your heart and your head together because you'll probably be difficult to split them up. Can Wales win at the weekend? Do you think they could pull something out of the bag? Luckily, my heart is bigger than my brain. <laughs> which I, I nearly said I nearly said my heart is bigger than my head. Then I know you wouldn't believe me. Uh, so it's. Uh, you know, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult because in the last period of Warren Gatlin, I think you go back to it, Wales found it difficult to lose. And that's what he would say in front of the cameras. That's what he would tell the team. That's what he would tell the fans. We are finding it at the moment difficult to lose. Now, at the moment, we have found it difficult to win games where, you know, we're getting there, we've not created enough, uh, mainly. Our set piece has gone slightly awry. Uh, and you look at that, and I'd be sitting down in the team room right now, and I would be saying to those Welsh players, and I, if, you know, uh, Alwyn Jones, 150 test caps, you know, huge amount of, uh, of experience, and he would be telling them, we've done it before. We've done it before. We've done it at Twickenham. We've done it at the Principality Stadium. We can do it again on Saturday. We can do it again on Saturday, but we have to be at our best. We can't be anything, uh, you know, below... Oh, best. Our scrimmage has got to be good. Our line has got to be good. Our contact area has got to be better than it's probably been, probably ever been, because the way England are playing at the moment. You know, Curry and Underhill, you know, uh, believe in the Paul made 25 tackles on the weekend. So we have really, really got to be the best we've ever been. And if we do that, then we can beat them. But it all comes down to having those key components, which are the basics. Because when you talk about basics, you talk about a good scrum, good lineup, good contact area. Do that, you could win the game. Anything off 100%, then we could be struggling. You've convinced me that we, Wales, are going to beat England at the weekend. So I'm with you. I would always say. A couple of other things. Uh, you touched on the home nation saying it, probably, it brings me on to the, the last question and something that I think everyone's looking forward to. Even if you're not a rugby fan, you'll, you'll be going to South Africa because hopefully everything will be open. Uh, for us then just to go and enjoy a bit of normality and you know an experience with what the Lions tour is and you know you, you know uh, uh, more than me how big an experience that is I had a, a bit of a boo-boo I suppose during lockdown I, I picked a, a Lions 15 for rugby pass I was like and I went down the list and <laughs> I, I picked one Welshman how dare I and he's not even well, well he is Welsh in, in Nick Tompkins but I took a lot of flack and I took a lot of shit off people online, which is fair enough, because obviously, and you can maybe tell me why, Lions tours in the past, the backbone of, the, of not just the team, but of the squad and the, and the staff have been Welsh. When you look at it, you look through that squad and speaking candidly and honestly, do you see many Lions touring South Africa from, from this current squad? In the Welsh squad? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, you know, I thought, I thought Adam Wainwright was immense on the weekend. Uh, he plays. He, he can play six, but he played eight uh, on, on the weekend. I and Gatlin likes him as well. Uh, Gatlin likes him as well, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Uh, he, well, he played in World Cup, came back, you know, and he, he's he's one of those guys that carries well, defends well. You know, he's got an old head on, on a young body, which is absolutely uh, absolutely vital in the in the modern game. He, he has control, gives very little penalties away, uh, has total control there. So I think he'd be one. Um, you have a look at, you know, Justin Tipperick was voted in, uh, in 17 uh, as the only British Irish Lions player that will get in the New Zealand team, uh, you know. Uh, I but, but I think with Tips as well, you know, he's such a versatile player, you know, he can get over, he can play a bit wider. Um, will Gax want to go for power because, you know, and he'll carry play well. The two Scottish boys, I thought, uh, were outstanding, you know. Um, uh, the Irish back row boy. I, I think back row is back row. I, I, you, you could almost chuck 15 names in the air. 
and see which eight sort of fall out, then you'd be happy with all eight. Liam Williams. No, yeah, Liam I, Williams I agree. I agree. So, uh, absolutely. Uh, Across absolutely the, class. With the ball, without the ball. Class. Who else? Yeah. Well, uh, John Davis, probably, if, if he keeps his foot, if, if he keeps fit. Um, you know, uh, two of the, you know, man of the series in the last one was absolutely, absolutely brilliant. He's, uh, he, Gats loves him, uh, and rightly so, because uh, when he doesn't play, he makes a huge, uh, a huge loss in, and we don't know how we're going to replace him when he retires. Um, and then you've got the likes of, uh, you know, uh, Ken Owen, who was on the bench in the last one. Uh, hopefully he gets fit again. And Alwyn Jones, you know, you know, you have Alwyn Jones out there at the moment. How would you not, if, if, you, if you go in, in June, uh, how would you not pick Alwyn Jones? I, 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 you know, will, he, I, I wouldn't. I, I mean, and I say this with the absolute utmost respect. The guy's a legend. A legend. Yeah. But for me, as you look across of the quality of second rows, that there are players playing better than. But what does that mean? You know, there's a leadership element that Alan Wynne Jones bring. He's the glue. Yeah. He, he's the glue of any side. Could he be a midweek captain? I suppose that brings me on. So you think he might go? I think still think he might go, whether or not he should. I mean, no one's going to listen to. Yeah, I, I think it will. Like, I've got to be honest. Luckily, we do this over Zoom because I, 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 I can tackle you now. <laughs> I, 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 you'd, you'd be up against. You'd be up against that wall. You would. But that's your heart. That's your big heart saying that, and rightly so. Look, oh, the guys, the guys are legend. I've crossed my arms now. I'm so upset. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Crossed my arms. I've... I'm sorry. Well, that, well, that, well, okay. Well, that brings me on. Can you see, and or who do you think is going to be captain? Because Marrow's leading the charge, but I th in terms of the media narrative, but also the way that he plays the game. As an absolute Welsh yeah. legend, would you follow Marrow to South Africa if you were, if you were in that squad now? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's like um, you know, I, I toured twice with the Lions, uh, all one, and of course '97, and you know, Martin Johnson was just an absolute leader. Uh, and Martin Johnson led led by the front. You know, uh, when Martin Johnson spoke, you listen. He didn't speak that often. What he did was lead from the front. He he, he led by action. Uh, and I know I've all liked this loads of times. Uh, if Martin Johnson asked me to run through that brick wall there now, I'd do it. And uh, he would have made it easy because two seconds before he made me do it, he would have made a hole for me to run through. That's the type of captain he was, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it does, when you get on that tour, there'll be 36 players probably uh, who leave these shores. And this, the most special thing about being a British and Irish lawyer is when you leave these shores, you become one. And w when you land in South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, uh, uh, and especially, I, I think, the day before the first test, uh, I remember, I'll never forget, the day before the first test in, in, in the Gaba, uh, in Australia, 2001, we just went for a walk. The, the, the Hilda was there, or Howlers was there. And I think it was a couple of we just went for a walk lunchtime after have a coffee. And, and there were 15,000, 15,000, 20,000 perhaps people in the middle of Brisbane. And that's all it was. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was, it was just good wishes. It was just, you know, come on, lads, we can do it. There wasn't any of this, you know, coming up and it was, it was, it was just from a distance, a little nod, a little wink, come on, lads, and singing in the corner and singing in the bars and singing in the coffee. And you just thought, oh my God, what the responsibility. This is amazing. You know, um, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. It doesn't matter what's going on. Ahead. In 2001, it was about the foot. You know, uh, sort of mouth and foot, foot and mouth in it. Uh, <laughs> Same thing, it I think. Went, it was foot and mouth, right? And uh, there it was. And, and of course, today we have COVID. And, and the one thing we have to look forward to, if, if all of this uh, uh, pans out like we do with all the vaccines and with everything that's coming in, in, in our way, and they say in, uh, in uh, March, uh, April, May time, you know, things will we'll get, back, we'll get back to a bit of normality. Um, the first big thing we have is coming together and partying in South Africa. And, you know, I tell you what, it will be rocking. It will be rocking. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm looking forward to a Friday before the first test, having a little walk around town and probably just standing there and just taking it all in and go, we got through this together. And now's our time to, you know, 
be that British and Irish line again. Well, I'll be your wingman, if that's all right, please. You'll be there. I got, <laughs> we've got wings. we got wings. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to it. Scott, that was class, Matt. I could have chatted to you all night. I really appreciate that. Ah, no problem. Thank you very much. OK, lads, time to deliver. This November... Amazon delivers you a brand new international knockout rugby tournament. The Autumn Nations Cup. Live on Amazon Prime. I can't allow that. Go again.